As a kid, I remember playing Super Monkey Ball Deluxe and I loved every second of it. I never ended up getting too far in the game because I sucked, but that also means that the intro cutscene and the first 10 levels are practically burned into my memory. When I got bored of failing by myself, I used to love the competition mode so I could instead fail my siblings. And whenever I got bored of that, I used to play Monkey Fight for literal hours. I don't know why I was obsessed with this mini game in particular, but I was also obsessed with Monsters Inc. Scream Arena, so Kid Me isn't the best judge of what games are good. Once I saw that they were releasing a remake called Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, I was thrilled. I booted up the game, and like most things from my childhood, it's not as great as I remember. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Or should I say, the monkey? Boo, you stink! The story mode is here, and it's just as fun as I remember. You play as one of the titular monkeys, or Sonic the Hedgehog, or Kazuma Kiryu, or Morgana, or Sega Genesis, as they roll their way to the finish line, collecting any bananas as they go. After each level, you get a list of missions that task you with completing the level quickly, getting enough bananas, etc, etc. These missions give you coins that can be used later in the store to buy more characters, outfits, and game modes. Each world in the campaign feels unique with its own theme both in the backgrounds and in the level design. The first world helps you to get a general feel of the game while still leaving opportunities to reward the player for making more risky plays so that they can get to the goal quicker. To be honest, the first few worlds seemed relatively easy, and that's partly because they got rid of the lives mechanic from the other games. Before, you had a certain amount of lives to get through the levels, and if you collected enough bananas, then you got an extra life. Since there's no lives, there's no real incentive to collect any of the bananas aside from getting enough to complete the current mission. And as the game went on, the difficulty for each level seemed to go all over the place. Some levels seemed like they were over before they even began, while others required you to sit there and wait before you could beat them. Some of the levels were relatively straightforward to play, and others legitimately made me nauseous. And then once you hit world 7 and 8, you can definitely tell how much the difficulty spikes. Even in the previous levels where there were optional bits of difficult platforming that gave you a different goal or more bananas, I could still finish them pretty quickly. But now, instead of passing each level on my first or second try, it often took me 10 times as long just to get past one level. Normally a random spike in difficulty frustrates me to no end, but Banana Mania has two ways to get around the difficulty. The first is the assist mode. This doubles the time on the clock from 1 minute to 2 minutes, it shows you the path you should take to the goal, and it lets you slow down time so you can perfect your movements. I honestly love this feature since it allows the more experienced players to play the game as intended while still giving people like me the ability to see parts of the game that I could never experience normally. The second option is to use some of the coins that you got from completing challenges to completely skip a level. I did end up having to use this more often than I'd like to admit, but what are you gonna do? For the most part, Banana Mania's story mode is a lot like the previous games. It's extremely easy to pick up and play since each level is relatively short and honestly it's just as fun as I remember. There are a couple of weird design choices in this game though. For one, they got rid of the timer that used to be on the goal. It was always fun and intense to make your way to the goal while you could see it counting down the seconds in front of you until you ran out of time, so I don't know why they got rid of it here. They also got rid of the inclusion of competition mode which allowed multiple people to play a course at once, which really hinders the replayability factor of the game. Dying in this game also feels worse than in the originals. When you die, the replay doesn't show what led to you falling off the stage like it does in the other games. Instead, it just shows you a fraction of a second before you started falling, which doesn't really help you to see what you did wrong. Dying several times in succession also brings up a prompt to turn on assist mode. Initially this was nice, but then it immediately got annoying when it happened several times on a single stage. Because of this, it almost feels like the game is a little bit too coddling. Instead of letting you learn from your mistakes and grow as a player, it feels like Banana Mania just wants you to lower the difficulty so you can get to the next level already. And you know what, I can almost excuse every single one of these problems because I love the general vibe of the game. I personally think the graphics look great, the controls felt responsive, and I think almost every single song is pleasant to listen to. In my personal opinion, I think the theme song is the best one here. But there's one thing I cannot excuse in the story mode. One thing so vile, so horrendous, that it makes me sick to my stomach every time I think about it. The cutscenes. Seriously, I don't expect a game about monkeys rolling around in balls to have the most captivating of stories, but look at this. What is this supposed to be? What is happening here? Back in the original games, you had actual longer cutscenes with dialogue so you could follow along with what was going on. Here it just feels like you're listening to an overactive toddler trying to explain the plot of the first games to you. This feels like such a massive downgrade from the first games, and even though it isn't that big of a deal, it still leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Aside from the story mode, there's actually a lot more you can do in this game. There's a store where you can unlock different characters and costumes. Some of these characters, like Kazuma Kiryu, also change the cosmetics of the bananas and other things from their series, like whatever this is. You can also unlock certain game modes like this one, where you have to collect all the bananas to win. These are relatively short, but they are a fun distraction and help to break up the gameplay a tiny bit. I honestly really liked all these modes, except for that one level that was twice as long as the other ones and I fell off at the very end. That one sucks. But that's not what we came here to talk about. 
it's time for the mini games. I remember playing these for hours as a kid, and I'm happy to say that nearly every single mini game withstood the test of time. Each game manages to have a little bit of depth to it that really sets it apart from other copy and paste mini game collections. The racing game has a nice variety of courses and items that you can use to attack your opponents. Bowling gives you the option of using certain special lanes that make it much more interesting than just throwing your poor monkey into the gutter each time. Monkey Shot is an on rail shooter that is pretty fun if not simplistic, although by pressing a button you can make the game play for you and shoot the enemies through walls. Monkey Target seems fun, but I honestly don't know how to stop the monkeys from crashing straight into the water. Let's just move on before PETA gets here. For what it is, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania is a solid way to introduce the game to a new generation while still adding stuff for older fans of the series. Does it suck that they got rid of a couple of features that I used to love about the game? Of course. But is the game still worth playing? I think so. All of my issues with Banana Mania are relatively minor in the grand scheme of things, and I still had a lot of fun going back through one of the first platformers I ever played. Plus, since the game is on Steam, you can technically just mod in any of the older features if you really miss them. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope to see you all again next week. Peace out.